Hey guys, for this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to be having a series. I'm going to read to you Buscando a Nemo or Finding Nemo in Spanish. And after reading a few pages to you, I'm going to go back to the first page that I read. And then I'm going to do my best to explain to you as quickly as I can why certain verbs are in the preterite and why some of them are in the imperfect. So if something comes across to you as, you know, you still don't understand it, obviously drop a comment in the comment section. And uh, I apologize ahead of time if I mispronounce any of the Spanish words. And also I'm finding that uh, I'm saying uh, Nemo and Nemo and Marlin and Marlene. So I'm saying their, their names with like a, a Spanish accent or an English accent at a time. So I apologize for that. But uh, here comes part one. En las profundidades del océano, cerca de la costa de Australia, una pareja de peces payaso llamados Marlin y Coral Admiraba su nuevo hogar, una confortable anemona que colgaba sobre un empinado acantilado. ¿Te gusta, verdad? Le preguntó Marlon a su esposa. ¡Shh! Vas a despertar a los niños, dijo solamente Coral, al tiempo que miraba hacia una cueva cercana llena de huevos de pez. Todavía tenemos que buscar los nombres. Me gusta Nemo. La pareja feliz jugó y bromeó, compartiendo sus sueños, como todos los futuros padres. Mientras Marlin la miraba, Coral nadó hacia el exterior, justo frente a una hambrienta barracuda. Al verla, Coral se preocupó por sus huevos y nadó hacia la cueva. Marlin trató de detenerla. Coral, espera, no les pasará nada. Ven aquí adentro, ven ahora mismo. Pero Coral, Coral siguió alejándose y la barracuda atacó. Marlin trató de defender a su familia interponiéndose entre la cueva y el gran pez pero fue arrojado contra el acantilado y quedó inconsciente. Cuando despertó, todo estaba en silencio. ¡Coral! ¡Coral! La cueva estaba vacía y Coral había desaparecido. No, soy yo, soy Marlin. Entonces lo vio. En un rincón había quedado un solo huevo, un poco aplastado. Marlin lo recogió y le dijo, Te prometo que nunca dejaré que te suceda nada malo. Nima. Con el tiempo, Nemo creció y se convirtió en un pececito feliz y lleno de curiosidad. ¿Cuántos años viven las tortugas marinas? Preguntaba. Su papá sonrió. Pues, ¿sabes qué? Si alguna vez me, encuent me encuentro con una tortuga, se lo preguntaré. Nemo quería correr aventuras y divertirse, pero Marlin, decidi decidido a protegerlo siempre, no lo perdía de vista ni un segundo. El primer día de escuela de Nemo. Marlin tuvo un ataque de pánico cuando escuchó que la clase iba a ir de excursión al acantilado. Preocupado, nadó tras ellos y escuchó cuando Nemo y sus amigos decidieron alejarse del grupo y probar su valentía, llegando más lejos de lo permitido. Marlin, enojado, llamó a su hijo. Nemo, recuerda que no puedes nadar muy bien. ¿Puedo nad nadar bien, papá? ¿Está bien? No, no está bien. ¿Sabes lo que pienso? Deberías empezar a ir a la escuela recién en uno o dos años. Nemo le lanzó una mirada llena de furia. Te odio, le dijo. All right, guys, so let's look at a little bit closer at the text now, the Spanish version of it, and decide why should the verb be in the preterite or the imperfect. So you don't see any of the uh, preterite and perfect in, the, in this first uh, paragraph until the third line down where it says admiraba. So it says that they were admiring their new home. So them, it's kind of setting up like a, a painting for you, like this is what they were doing in this picture. They were admiring their new home, which was um, perched on the steep cliff. So this is kind of setting, setting up like a picture for you, painting it for you. Um, it wasn't like they just did it. It's saying they were doing it. Their home was located here. These are ongoing things in the past. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, the next page. All right, so on the second page, uh, the first time we see any preterite imperfect is right here. Um, basically, it's saying that she said that sentence. It wasn't saying she was saying it over and over, but she just said it, so that's why it's in the preterite. And then, so she said it while she was looking at the cave. So she was doing this when she said that. Uh, and then let's go down just a little bit. It says the couple uh, played and joked around. So this is something they just did. It didn't want to say they were doing it. They just did it. Um, and then uh, here's that word mientras, and if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that mientras is going to be followed by the imperfect. So uh, while Marlon was looking at her, she did this. She swam outside, uh, just in front of the hungry barracuda. 
All right, so on this next page, um, it says that uh, upon seeing the Barracuda, uh, Coral became worried. That's why this isn't a predator. It wasn't like she was getting wor worried. Uh, she just became worried, and she swam toward the cave. So she wasn't swimming toward the cave. She just swam towards the cave. Marlin tried to stop her. So again, he wasn't trying to stop her. He just went and tried to do it, and he said those things. But she continued going further away, uh, and the Barracuda attacked. So... Uh, this one right here, this is the Sigio and the Preterite. I think, personally, it could be either way. Sigia and the Imperfect, or Sigio and the Preterite, kind of depending on what it is exactly the author wanted to say. Was she doing it, or she just did it type of a thing? Um, so I think it could be either way on that one. And then the Barracuda attacked. Uh, like, it began to attack. It wasn't attacking, it just, boom, it did it, attacked. Uh, Marlon tried to defend his family. He wasn't trying, he just tried to do it really quick but then he was hit against the wall. So these are things that just happened in succession. Happened, happened, happened. They weren't happening. It just happened, and then everything went black. It just happened again. When he woke up again, Preterit, because he just, boom, wakes up, everything was silent. So this one, you'll notice the stars and the imperfect. That's because the silence was like an ongoing thing when he woke up. So that's why they want you to have that in mind when you're reading the story. It was an ongoing thing. The cave was empty. empty. Again, it's painting the picture for you, setting the background. This is what things looked like. And she had disappeared. And then... Um, he, uh, he said sadly, you know, no, he just did this the one time. And then he saw it. So he saw, he wasn't seeing it, he just saw all of a sudden uh, this egg, which was in the corner. He picked it up, he said this thing. So these are things that just happened. He did this, he did that. He saw it, he picked it up, he said, preterit, preterit, preterit. All right, so we got a long, long paragraph here. Uh, so with time, Nemo grew up, so he just did it, he grew up, and he became this happy fish. Uh, and then this over here, the Pritigun Thaba's name perfect, which implies that he was asking, uh, like asking over and over and over again, how old are these turtles? Uh, and his dad smiled, so he, he didn't just like, wasn't smiling, he just smiled after he asked him these questions. Uh, let's see, and then he says down here, um, Nemo wanted to go on adventures, so him wanting to go on adventures was an ongoing feeling. This kind of goes back to his feelings. Also, with Kerer, and the, it has a different meaning in the Preterite. Uh, in the Preterite, it means to um, have wanted, like I wanted to do something and I accomplished it. Uh, and if it was no, and with Kerer in the Preterite, it's like to refuse to do something. So it meaning changes in the, in the Preterite. You'll find that with a lot of verbs in Spanish. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, and Nim or not Nemo, uh, his dad you know, wasn't going to lose him from his sight. Um, this was like an ongoing thing that he wasn't going to let him leave his sight type of a thing. Uh, let's see, the first day of school, Marlon had a panic attack. So this first day of school kind of confines it in this one time he had it all of a sudden. It's like, not like he was having it. He just, boom, had his uh, panic attack when he heard. So he heard, wasn't hearing this thing. He just heard it all of a sudden that the class was going to go on, an ex on this excursion. So the going is kind of like the ing of the past. We're going to use the imperfect for that one. Uh, worried, he swam behind them. Uh, so it's predator. He did it. And he heard, all, again, he heard uh, when Nemo and his friends decided. So they weren't deciding to do something. They just decided to go away from the group. Uh, and then, let's see, Mar Marlin called his son. So again, he just did it. And he says those things to him. Um, let's see, any more predator imperfect? Yeah, right here. Uh, Nemo, like, you know, gave him this look. Uh, it wasn't like he was giving, he just all of a sudden he gave him this f furious look. And he said, le dijo, he said to him that he hates him. So again, said is in the preterite because he just said it this one time. So um, that's going to be it for this uh, first session of Finding Nemo in Spanish. Hopefully this is helping you out with the preterite versus imperfect. If you have any comments or questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you next time.